What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Guys, this video we're going to be going over Lake Possum Kingdom, kind of breaking it down for you, kind of what I think was going on, what was happening at the time. Um, let me break down the weather real quick. The weather was very, very chilly. It got really cold right before the tournament, or I guess a couple days before the tournament, cooling the water down. Um, they had some rain, some colder runoff. Uh, and the fish at Possum Kingdom had been spawning for quite a long time. So uh, they've been spawning for around three or four weeks. So this tail end of the spawn was coming up and the lake was hit hard with an algae bloom as well as just numerous amounts of tournaments. Now the tournaments ranged from, I mean, 10 pounds to win all the way up to like 30 plus pounds. So it really just depends if you got on the right areas, the right stretches, you could catch a ton of fish. Now, uh, the way Bennett and Patrick's day went was pretty rough. It rained the entire day, basically. We might have had 30 minutes to an hour of zero rain, and it was just overall cold and wet, and I did not have a, a lot of fun sitting there in the boat, but we did find some really good stuff Friday. So we're going to run through uh, practice on Friday. Uh, kicking it off, we started... Uh, basically right where we launched in the morning, which was at, uh, let me see here. It was in a marina area and it was, let me see, it was right next to Lush, which, it, which Lush is a pretty good area to go fish most of the time anyway, but we technically launched at, so we launched at the, uh, BRA recreation area, one boat ramp, and that's in the big marina area. So the first place we hit was very, very shallow. We went down behind the backs of some of those boat docks, saw a couple fish. We actually were just kind of throwing out there with weightless Senkos. The ones we were throwing were the, um, power bait max and generals. We want to get as much you know, juju going, making sure that the fish can smell it, see it. Uh, the generals have a great wobble anyway. Uh, they're pretty decently heavy, not as much as a Yamamoto Senko. They don't have as much action, but they definitely smell. So um, that was what we were throwing out there. We caught two fish like right off the bat. I don't think anyone had been out there at the time because we were out there right at like 6.30, 7 o'clock, um, right when I guess the tournament would have started. So, you know, we caught two fish immediately those were both keepers little like maybe 1.8 pounders left outside the marina and started running all over the lake checking creeks cuts uh ledges river channel bends checked timber um eventually the starting spot that we chose to go to was actually way up on the north side of the lake um what was very unique about it is it was a little spawning cove type area in the very very far back of this creek now i don't think the reason why it's so good is i think not a lot of people hit it during the day in pre-fish and in other tournaments and it had a pipe running down from the bank all the way very very deep into the water very out towards the middle of the cove so uh as as we rolled up to this area we were like man uh these fish if they're going to be spawning they're definitely going to want to spawn in and around this pipe area and the pipe was a pretty good sized pipe it was about 14 inches in diameter around or i guess like 14 inches wide essentially and you know first cast i flipped a brush hog up there um the one that really got the job done for us was this watermelon candy baby brush hog um, watermelon candy just seemed to be the deal i'm not sure if they just didn't want green pumpkin or the watermelon provided just enough light penetration to where it was very effective, but it definitely worked out really well for us. We dye the um, tail chartreuse, imitate a bluegill a little bit more, and, you know, first flip up there, I caught one. It was a keeper. Um, we went around the same area. It had a main dock in it, and we flipped the dock, and I shook off like a three-pounder, three-plus pounder, which was really, really cool. Now we did mix in some other techniques, of course. Um, we love having a drop shot on, and actually the drop shot was what won and had a lot of success for a lot of anglers um, at Possum Kingdom. So Karsten Dunn and his partner Grayson uh, won the tournament with a little over 23 pounds, so congrats to them. Um, they were throwing a drop shot, and um, if you wanna go see the exact setup they were using, you can go check it out on his uh, Instagram or Facebook. I, I believe he posted it up there. Um, but back to Friday, guys, we also threw around a six inch mag draft quite a bit. Now, being seeing beds all over the place, seeing empty beds especially, 
we wanted to try to key in on those bigger female fish because there were plenty of males around the banks. Um, the people that caught them didn't catch them directly off like spawning fish. A lot of them were fry garters or ones that were just sticking around those areas to check it out, protect the eggs a little bit more. Uh, you know, we probably caught, I don't know, five to seven bed fish um, during the day just to check their size because, you know, with those bed fish, I'd seen it before where they're not leaving. You can go back easily the next day and catch them. Uh, point being, the last place we actually stopped during the pre-fish day on Friday was actually in the very, very back of a very skinny pocket, like way back there. And there was like a 15 incher that we were just messing with um for like 20 minutes just to try to get to eat and uh by the time we rolled over their tournament day there was still a boat in that area and they actually sat there and caught that fish eventually so it was very interesting to see how locked on those fish were um now we did also see some very spooky fish that didn't want to stay in that area you know i felt like they were very post very very post spawn but still wanted to protect the eggs and the fry in that area so they really just jetted off from those beds and essentially wouldn't come back for around five to ten minutes. And if you know you're used to bed fishing, when they do that, it is very ineffective to actually fish for them. So um, we did get a lot of follows from some big females on the mag draft. We throw it up there, I don't know, five, six foot off the bank right kind of where that visibility line ends and these big females would come up and chase the bait now we didn't get any committers to eat the mag draft it was actually not a bad bait to throw up near the bank and just kind of watch them come off especially if they were uh near beds but overall the finesse tactics for us was they were very very effective so the main um baits again were going to be the general um wacky rigged with a vmc crossover ring um number three spear point hook on that the drop shot robo worm this is just a six inch straight tail this one here martin's madness um number three spear point hook gp finesse and then the baby brush hogs we were using the size two or i guess the two watt offset worm hook uh, it's a little bit skinnier bait keep that profile of the hook low and a very tiny quarter ounce weight so we throw that out there 12 pound line most of the time and just kind of pull it along just hop it and then reflip out there, kind of like you're working down the bank. Of course, six inch mag draft we were throwing. Um, the Borealis Shad, and that one very white, very bright, definitely in charge and out there. So we got a lot of aggressive fish on that. And um, we ended up qualifying. It was very close. We weighed in um, tournament day, we weighed in 9.36 pounds, which was only like 0.4 pounds above the cut line. So we were about 10 places away from the cut line, thankfully. Uh, and we made it in by the, uh, by the hair of our chests. So, um, guys, overall, PK, very post-spawn. If you go out there, I would probably start throwing around some bigger baits. I would definitely try out the drop shot for sure. It's definitely effective. I do know there was a good dock bite out there. We didn't get on the dock bite very well. We tried it for a little bit, throwing the Senkos, throwing the swim baits. I threw a glide around quite a bit. Had a few follows here and there, but nothing very consistent. So we probably just didn't get on the right stretches of dock. We covered a ton of water in practice from uh, our starting spot way, way, way over in the west side and then all the way down to the dam. And overall, it was a good day uh, on Friday. Very nice weather at nearing the end of the day. However, Saturday, we actually ended up getting off the water at 1 o'clock. Weighing in because the rain was just way too much. Uh, I had things to do at home. I had a bunch of stuff going on. And then we also had to get ready for the Eagle Mountain Tournament um, for the Strike King Big Bass one. So it was a very busy weekend, guys. So I apologize that I haven't had a lot of videos going out. Um, we've been preparing for this and we've got a lot of cool stuff coming for y'all. So if you are interested in any of the tackle we use here, definitely check it out, lakefrettackle.com. Make sure to stock up on your rods, reels, and tackle. Of course, we've got a huge selection of swim baits, swim bait rods, and all the things to go with that. So we've got some cool stuff coming, guys. I know I've said this a lot, but guys, just you wait. Really cool stuff down the road, and I am super excited for it. So I hope you had a great day today, or if you are, are watching this in the morning, you have a great day going forward here so we will see you next time thank you so much for watching guys if you're going out to pk let us know let us know how you did and we'll see you next time see you guys